Family Theater presents Ray Bolger and Keith Brazell. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents News Hawk, starring Keith Brazell. And now, here is your host, Ray Bolger. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, Newshawk, starring Keith Brazell. Hello there. Your name Lou Clark? Well, what's left of me is, you know, that train of yours takes a lot out of a man. <laughs> This line holds so much ore, they don't quite know what to do with the passengers. My name's Henry Miller. I run the Sentinel here in town. Oh, uh, yeah, uh -huh. I've got my car right over here. Your bureau called and said you were coming. Thought I'd save you a walk. See, we don't have any taxi service here. It doesn't look to me like you got much of anything here, Mr. Miller. Oh, not much, but we like it. Haven't seen your byline on the wires. You are new with the organization, Mr. Clark? That's right. And I'm not thinking of getting old with it, either. You don't like new service work? To me, it's just a step up a long ladder. Or a short ladder if a man's lucky. I'm more cut out for big papers in big cities. Big fish in a big puddle, eh? Hey, this is my car right here. Hey, put your camera in the back. All right, good enough. Your paper, the, uh, the, uh... Sentinel. Oh, yeah, the Sentinel. Uh, what is it, weekly, Mr. Miller? That's right. Kind of a family operation. Mostly local news, some art... Well, isn't this thing we're going to see more local news than anything else? What was it, a cave-in or something like that? A little more than that. I'd put a little more in the disaster class. Looks pretty bad. Had a blast this morning that rattled windows in town. A couple of more later. I don't have any figures yet in damage or loss of life, but it could be a terrible thing. Oh, could be quite a potential, then. Potential, Mr. Clark? You know, it might turn out big, news-wise, it is. Yeah, I suppose you could say so. <laughs> you suppose? Well, is it big or isn't it? It might help you to know something about me, Mr. Clark. Something about you? I am a small town editor and a stringer for your news service. Uh, yeah? I haven't always been a small town editor. I've put a few years and some valuable experience behind me. And, well, I think you've got a fair-sized story here. Uh, you're trying to tell me that you know my job. Well, I, uh, I doubt if I'll need any help, Mr. Miller, but, well, if you want to tag along for kicks, it's all right with me. Thanks, but that's not quite what I had in mind. You see, I settled here because I like the people. See, I know most of them. You want to make this story as big as you can. Well, I can understand that. But please, just, just don't push too hard, that's all. Follow me? <laughs> yeah, I follow you. All right, now, uh, what happened, huh? Well, I put what I had on the teletype, but apparently you didn't read it. No. Mining is a big business in these parts, and right now it's the big trouble. Had an underground blast this morning, put the mine out of operation, trapped a few people. Well, what's all this, uh, a few people? How many? Well, there were some down there when I came to get you. How many might still be down there, I just don't know. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, what caused the blast? The safety advisor says a fire set the blast, and he seems to think that the fire started out electrically. Yeah, here we are. Better start unpacking that camera. Yeah. You, uh, you know how to work one? Uh... Four by five speed graphics? Well, that's right. I think I could manage. Uh, main shaft is over there, and... Yeah, that uh, building with the people around it. That's the emergency hospital. Mm -hmm. I was going to suggest we stop in there for a minute. I think we might be able to talk to the man who was down there when the fire started. You've got a point, Mr. Miller. Lead the way. He's 
had a fairly tough time, so please don't stay too long. Charlie was the first one hurt, Doc? Yes, that's right. Bad burns and severe shock. You'll keep it short, eh? Yeah, sure thing, Doc. Charlie, someone here to see you. Is it all right? <laughs> all right with me. Anything new, Doc? Anybody else out here? I'll let you know as soon as I hear anything, Charlie. Now, this gentleman here is Lou Clark. He's from a news service in the city, and you know Hank Miller. Oh, hello, Hank. Hello, Charlie. Uh, Charlie, this is a uh, pretty big thing, wh what's happened here, you know? I know. And uh, a lot of people are interested. Uh, you know what a news service is, Charlie? Well, I'm not sure. Well, it takes news on teletype machines to different newspapers all over the country. That, uh... Well, that kind of makes me a reporter for a thousand different newspapers. Uh, That's why I, uh, I have to body at a time like this. It's okay, Mr. Clark. Now, uh, what happened down there, Charlie? Well, I, I was running the donkey engine, pushing a string of empties. Uh, ore cars? Uh, ore cars. Mm -hmm. I, I just came around the bend when I, I, I hit something. Yeah, well, what was it, Charlie? I, I don't know what it was. Section of pipe or conduit. Something like that. I, I saw it fly up and break the power cable. I, I, I could see it break the cable and I saw the line fall, fall on the first car. If you please, Mr. Clark, I think that's enough. Look, just another minute, Don. Then there was, there was a blue flash and... Something hit me. What did it feel like, Charlie? Mr. Clark. Look, can't you remember, Charlie? I, I, I couldn't... I, I couldn't even tell you about it. I, I don't want to think about it. Well, well, then what? Then what? Then I, I, I came to... And someone was giving me artificial respiration. I, I, I tried to breathe, but... All I could get was smoke. I, when I, I coughed, she... She turned me over and shot something in my arm. And then some of the men c c carried me to the elevators. When she turned you over, what, what do you mean, Charlie? I think that's enough, Mr. Clark. He's tired, Dr. Clark. Look, just another second. What do you mean, she, Charlie? Uh, uh, nurse. Uh -huh. Nurse. I never saw her again. You, you never saw her again? <laughs> She wasn't in, in the elevators and not here. Thanks, boy. You better get some rest now. Uh, uh, mister. Yes, Charlie? Yeah. Yeah. You, you'll let me know how, how things are going. I'll make a point of it, boy. Come on, Mr. Miller. Doctor, I want to talk to that nurse. Well, you'll have to go to the mine to do that. She's one of the people who didn't come up. Now look, Mr. Iverson, you're not giving me much cooperation. I'm sorry, Mr. Clark, but I can't give you anything I haven't given the other newsmen. You have the names of the injured, the name of the nurse who's still down there, Mary Greer, and the names of the miners we haven't located. That's all I can do. I'm sorry. Come on, Clark. I'm going down that shaft. No, you're not. I can't allow either you or Hank Miller down there, and that's final. Look, Mr. Miller, who runs this mine? Right now, he does. That's right. I'm in charge of safety here, and right now, safety is the paramount issue. Is there something down there you're trying to hide, Mr. Iverson? Clark, that's not called for. Uh, what do you call this? No threat, Mr. Iverson, but I'll tell you this. I can only report what I see and hear, and a man hears a lot of things standing around the top of the shaft. Look, let me go down there and take a look for myself. Hey, don't look at me, Iverson. He's not mine. Mr. Clark, there's nothing happening down there that I can't tell you about. And as you know, our electrical system is shorted out. That elevator's using auxiliary power that may give out almost any time. I'll waver your responsibility. You bet you will, but I'm not worried about you. You'll be taking up space, Mr. Clark. But you don't seem to care about that. Just don't get in the way, that's all. Just don't get in the way. Now, you, you men...
men know your job. Four people are still there. We want to get them out, but we don't want anybody hurt doing it. Our power is shorted out. That means no ventilation, so we may have a gas problem. We're trying to fix the power system, but it'll take time. Till it's fixed, none of you are to stay down more than an hour. Now, is that understood? One hour. All right, One hour. All right men. Good luck. Close the gate and get going. Watch the gate. Hold your arms. Did you see the long faces on the other newsmen, Mr. Miller? They could have come along if they'd cared to use your tactics. <laughs> hey, how long is this trip? Not long. A couple of minutes. Who's the foreman of the operation? Ed Summerfield, fellow with a rope over his shoulder. Oh, I'd like to talk to I'd him. I'd do that later if I was you, mister. Do you remember your list? Yeah. There was a Summerfield on it. The brother of the man with the rope. Oh. Yeah. I'd let him be just now. Uh, I guess there'll be plenty of time. Well, now. So you've had a lot of experience, eh, Mr. Miller? A few years. Well, uh, you were ready to give up with Iverson. Maybe I think Iverson was right. Well, maybe he was wrong, too. I'll take the chance. All right, right, this here's the level. All right, hold it a minute. Well, it looks like Summerfield's got something to say, huh? Right. Now, we got an hour and that's all. So we're going to use it as well as we can. You there. Talking to me? Yeah, that's right. Iverson told me about you. I'm putting you to work. You too, Mr. Miller. I'm more than willing to do whatever I can. I know that, Mr. Miller. You just better get your friend here thinking the same. Now, there are five of us, and we're going to split into two parties. Work both directions. Smith will go with you two. Any objections? Well, none that I can see. All right with you, Smith? Anything you say, Ed. All right, then. Bill and me will head for where the others was found. You boys go the other way. Right. Now, let's go. Falling stuff that isn't natural, is it, Smith? If it was, there wouldn't be a whole lot of people in the mining business. Yeah. Explosions loosen up this whole strata. I don't like it. Well, you're not the only one. Hey, that uh, camera getting too heavy for you, Mr. Miller? Uh, I'm, I'm making out all right. Hey. Say, Smith, these telephones we see every few hundred yards. I'm yard. a blink like everything else. Hey, hold it up a minute. Yeah. All right. Hold quiet. Hello! You hear anything? Not me. No, uh, that nothing. Was Say, uh, tell me about this nurse, Mary Greer. What's she look like? Pretty girl? Mary? Yeah. Don't know whether you'd say she's pretty. Real nice girl, though. Real nice girl. Five three, brunette hazel eyes, 109 pounds, born in Mesa, Arizona. <laughs> you know her, Mr. Miller? I looked her up in the employee card catalog. I figured you'd do the same. Real nice girl. Mm. Hey, do you think we're looking in the right direction? Sure hope so. She might be done in. Had a blast on this level this morning enough to shake the whole mountain. Shoring might have given way in a few places. You mean some cave-ins? More than likely. Well, she might be cut off, then. She might be. There's three others down here. They might be cut off, and we're down here, and we might get cut off. Mine's had some bad shakes. Take a lot of shoring up before she'll be fit to work in again. Hey, let's stop, man. I'll try another call. Hello? I don't hear a thing. Uh, Wait a minute. What? Did you hear something? No. No, I guess not. Right. How much time have we got left? Now we've been pretty close to a half hour. We've got to be starting back pretty quickly. Well, let's hope the other party had some luck. Hey. hey. What's this? End of the shaft? Uh-uh. That's new. Shoring's given way. Well, this is one of those cutoffs you were talking about. There just might be somebody behind that. How thick would that be? No way of telling. Might be a few feet, might be 50 or 100. Well, wait a minute. What's that? What? Bring your light to bear where mine is. Where? You see, wait, way up there, toward the top. Yeah. It looks like a hole. Yeah, it looks like it. We right. might be in luck. Hello! Yeah, wait a minute. Sounds like it's ready to go any minute. Be quiet and listen. I heard something. Are you sure? I tell you, I heard something. Come on, let's have a look. No, wait a minute. 
You ain't careful, you'll pull that whole mountain down. Let go of me. We're not going to learn anything down here. Be careful, Clark. Look, this hole's big enough for a man to crawl through. Come on up here with a camera, Mr. Miller. Hey. Now, I haven't got a whole lot of time, but I guess we better take a look anyway. Look, it looks like it goes all the way through. Yeah, I think it does. Anybody in there? Here! Yeah. You hear that? I heard it. She's in there all right. Hold on, we'll get you out. Anybody in there with you? I don't think so. Please hurry. Hold on. We'll be there in no time. Give me that camera, Mr. Miller. I'm going through. You hold up there. I'm going to pull the whole roof down. The only thing holding it up is the dirt we're on. You move that. Mr. Road. There's somebody in there. Well, it won't take long to shore up here, and then we can go through. This way, there's a better chance it'll do more harm and good. You try to go in there, we may never get the girl out. Listen to him, Clark. He knows what he's talking about. Yes. Look, you listen to him. The way it looks to me, the roof could go any time, with help or without it. I came down here to get a story and pictures to go with it. I'm going to get them both, and I'm going to help that girl at the same time. You can stay or come with me. I don't care, but I'm going. Uh, Smith, uh, maybe you'd better go find the others. Tell them where we are. You don't leave me much choice. All right, how about you? I'm coming with you. Then come on. <laughs> Look, you better give me my camera. You're not... You're not built for this kind of thing, huh, Mr. Miller? Uh, I'm doing all right. You okay? Yeah. Hold on, Mary, we're coming! <laughs> well, that does it. Where are you? I'm here! You see her? Over here! You see her anyplace? No, I... Wait, then. There she is. Where? Come on. Come on. Hold on, wait a minute. I want to get that picture first. Hurry. I gotta check the bulb. Mary, look over this way. Set the scale for 14 feet, cock the shutter, and snap. There, we got it. Well, that picture will see a lot of papers, Mr. Miller. Mary. Mary. Mary, are you all right? Well, I feel better now that you're here, but I'm afraid I've broken my ankle. Is it, is it giving, much, giving much pain? No. Now, if I don't move, I had a procaine syrette in my pocket. It wasn't enough, but it helped. How did it happen? When the cave-in started, I ran. I guess I tripped over something. Uh. Dropped my light at the same time. I couldn't see. I, I couldn't even know which, which way to crawl. It was such a long time. And, and then when I heard you crawl, I... Mary. <laughs> Mary, it's... It's all right, Mary. You're going to be... Gonna be all right now. Oh, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I'm usually able to control myself. Oh, sure you are. Don't worry. Look, go ahead. Have a good cry. It'll make you feel better. You want my handkerchief? No, no. I'm gonna be all right. That dirt as much as anything it just kept falling. Yeah. The echoes. I couldn't tell where it was coming from. I'm just frightened. I guess. I don't like the sound of it myself. Maybe we'd better. Move a little. You got a good point, Mr. Miller. Now, if we can only get her up to the front here, we're Here it comes! Here we go! Easy, Mary! Are you all right, Mary? Yes, I think so. This ankle. The oh. ankle. Oh, if only I hadn't dropped my aid bag when I dropped my light. My camera. I left my camera back there and the film holder's still in it. <sighs> Cigarette, Mr. Miller? No, thanks. You missed the point. Have you got one? Oh, no, I, I haven't. Uh. I, uh, I don't suppose oh, you... I'm sorry, I don't smoke. What time you got, Mr. Miller? Oh, it's... 135. 1.35. <laughs> Two hours ago, I was rich. Two hours ago, I was sitting on a top story. Proud possessor of what might have been a top news picture of the year. Now what have I got? My picture is under five tons of rock and sand, and my story... All right, Mr. Miller, you're an old, experienced newspaper man. You tell me. How do you file a story from a sealed-up mine? I wouldn't be... 
too impatient about filing it until it's finished. That's a point, Mr. Miller. Good point. Mm. Of course, then there's a new angle on this thing now. I've got an angle no one else has got. I can put that to work for me. Two hours. What are they doing out there? You'd think we'd hear something. Mm. Why don't you try that emergency telephone again, Clark? Well, it's still dead. Look, take it easy, girl. They'll get us out. It just takes a little time. Yeah, I'm sorry, Mr. Clark. Oh, nobody's blaming you, Mary. Of course not, Mary. I can't even blame Clark here. Much as I'd like to. Oh, thanks. Oh, forget it. Look, you know something? <coughs> In a way, she is the cause of it. We wouldn't be down here now if it hadn't been for you, Mary. Well... You just happen to be human interest, that's all. Human interest? Yeah, you know, three miners trapped, that's news, all right, but, but one girl trapped, one nurse whose life is in jeopardy because she faithfully performed her duty, that's bigger news. You see too many movies, Clark. You know something? That picture of mine would have made you famous, Mary. <laughs> I don't want to be famous. <laughs> no fame and fortune? Oh, come on, tell me. What do you want out of life? Oh, I don't know. To help people, I guess. Oh, no. Well, what do you want? What do I want? Well, I want more than I've got. How's that for a normal answer? And I want more than he's got. You know something, Mr. Miller? I can't see what you get out of life. Editor of a two-bit weekly in a town like this one? Clark, I've been insulted by experts, and you, <laughs> you're a second rater. You know, I don't know why you were sent here, Clark. You've accomplished nothing for your organization. You've made a considerable number of enemies. Stepped on every toe in sight, and the information you've gathered is still in your head. Where I'd say it has plenty of room to move around. Mr. Miller, it's just that this story is... What story? It's... You haven't got a story. You're still in love with it. It's got you. <laughs> you've yeah. certainly got a point there. Oh, no sarcasm, please, but... Well, you're probably right about everything. It's your method, Clark. You've got a lot to learn about tactics. The end... Just never justifies the mean. Look, hasn't anybody got a kind word? I sure have. Golly, if you hadn't come for me, Mr. Clark, I think maybe I'd still be back there where your camera is. I believe you're right, Mary. Something in your favor, Clark. I think maybe you saved the lady's life. It's the telephone. You said it, it was. was it was dead as a doornail. They must have fixed it. Answer it. Hurry. No, okay, I'll get it right now. Hello? Hello? Yes, we're all right. The girl has a broken ankle, but out of sight, we're all right. When can you get through to us? What's he say? I don't know, just a minute. What's happening? We're going to be all right. They're shoring up the other side. What's that? I didn't hear you. He says that they got the power on again. They should be through to us in a couple hours. Let me talk to here, him. Here, here. Hello, this is Hank Miller. Who's this? Oh, Iverson. How about the other three? Good. How are they? They're already on the surface. No critical injuries. Iverson, uh, would you mind calling my wife? Let her know I'm all right. Tell her everything that's happened. Thanks. Ask him if we can get... Oh, Iverson, is there any chance of getting this phone tied into an outside line? So... Oh, I see. All right. We'll be waiting for you. Oh. Well, Clark, he says it's a closed circuit. Intercommunication system only. That's why it went out when the power did. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. Your bureau will get the news. My wife will put it on the teletype. Your wife? Sure. Don't you remember what I told you? A weekly newspaper is usually a family affair. Of course, she'll probably run an extra first. An extra? She'll have that locked in the case before she'll put anything on the wire. But the story will get to your bureau before the Sentinel extra hits the streets. Which, the way I see it, should be a good half hour before we get out. Ought to be pretty good, too. Yeah, pretty good. If Iverson talks to my wife, she'll get more out of him about what happened today than any newsman I ever heard of. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that telephone. I know you wanted to phone your story in. <laughs> it's all right, Mr. Miller. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> well, Mr. Miller, I, I just want to say thanks for everything. <laughs> well, like you said, it's all right. I guess I gave you a pretty bad time for it, didn't I? Well, it's all right. Look, I... I just want you to know, though, that... that I'm sorry. Well, look, sometime, if you're back this way ever, maybe I'll tell you about my first big assignment and make you feel better. <laughs> hey, I guess I better get on board. Oh, one thing. We didn't send that story with the byline. 
Your bureau won't know it came from the stringer instead of the reporter. Now, if they don't ask you, it might be a good idea not to tell them for a while. If you think news service work is a step up the ladder for you, well, it might help you to stay on the step until you're ready for the next one. <laughs> you follow me? You've got a point, Mr. Miller. And you know something? It's a long ladder any way you look at it. This is Ray Bolger again. You know, if there really were a pot at the foot of the rainbow containing the greatest treasure in the world, do you know what that treasure would be? Happiness. Yes, happiness, the most priceless possession there is. I think if you get right down to it, every one of us agree that happiness is the one thing we really want. Lots of times we get a little sidetracked, thinking that a new job, a new car, more money will bring us happiness. But deep in our hearts, we know it won't. Because real happiness has nothing to do with wealth or material things. Happiness is a quality that comes from love. Unselfish love. Love of God. Love of our own husbands and wives. Our children. Our families. And the road to happiness isn't a rainbow. It's a difficult path where we have to keep climbing, pulling, working all the time. But one thing that smooths the path is prayer. Family prayer. Try it and you'll see. Ask God sincerely and with complete faith in his understanding for his help. So pray. Pray together as a family every night. For a family that prays together, stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you News Hawk, starring Keith Brazell. Ray Bolger was your host. Others in our cast were Lillian Bayef, Pat McGeehan, Lawrence Dobkin, Leo Curley, and John Larch. The script was written by Robert Hugh O'Sullivan with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman and was directed and transcribed for Family Theater by John T. Kelly. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our Family Theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of Family Theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to be with us next week when Family Theater will present The Losers. Bing Crosby will be your host. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network, this is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Mm -hmm.